Um, so let me go back to there. I'm going to hit enter, enter, enter. And now I'm going to open up this little hello world file I haven't seen. So you'll notice right now we're in this mode called DIRED by name, directory by name. It's essentially we're in the directory browser. Before we were editing this text, it said fundamental down here. That's just the raw, nothing special going on text editing mode. Now if I open up a .c file, you'll see it goes into this C slash L abbreviated mode. Uh, this is the default mode for when you're editing C code. So if you're in a file that ends with .c or .h, you're by default going to land in this mode. Uh, there are actually multiple C modes for, for the reason that you can never please a programmer, so you have 10 different ways of doing it. This is the default one, this is the one I always use, it works great. You'll notice a few things have changed now. First, my text is all color coded, right? It's by default going to color code and do syntax highlighting for me based upon the C programming language. Um, if this were .py, if this file had been hello.py, this would say Python of some form down here, and it would be syntax highlighting for Python, so on and so forth. It's going to do a few other things when you're in a specific language mode. So beyond the syntax highlighting, when I hit tab now, it's always going to make that tab four spaces. So I hit tab, that's not actually a tab. If I use my arrow keys, you'll see they're actually spaces. Um, this is all configurable. Uh, <laughs> it's one of those other great fights of how many spaces a tab should be when you're writing programs in computer science, right? But uh, I like four. Four is what I have my default. On the VM, it's probably eight. I think the Emacs default is probably eight spaces. That's weird like that. Um, I will show you how to customize some of these settings later, but the point being, there's a lot of things associated with this C mode. There's syntax highlighting, there's what happens when you hit a tab. Um, there is, if I go to write something like another fprintf statement, you will notice that when I hit, when, so it's doing, uh, it's essentially doing parentheses mashing for me. So when I close this function, the cursor briefly dances over to there. And if you watch at the bottom of the screen, uh, okay, no, not right now. Um, it'll sometimes tell you, if you're on one line, I don't think it does this, but if you're doing matching across multiple lines, it'll tell you the line number of what parentheses matches the one you were currently on. So same kind of deal if I go down here and type, um, let's scroll off. So, yeah. So if I type a, if I close my main function down here and the top of my main function is no longer on the screen, it'll now say the bracket I just touched matches the bracket up on this line here. So it's doing bracket matching for me. It, you know, it's helping keep me sane. It'll do tabbing to the correct space. So if I try to move this back here, or if I put it halfway in between and hit tab, it's going to take me to where it thinks it should be in the current function, right? If I do a for loop um, or a while loop, Right? And then I come down here, I can actually hit tab with my cursor anywhere on this statement, and it'll indent it where it needs to be because it's inside the current loop. Right? Go down here, close that out, it's going to show me my matching. And uh, it's actually not matching correctly because this is all valid syntax. I'm missing. Okay, so that's how it should match. Uh, when you get something like that and the brackets aren't where they should be, it almost always means there's a syntax error somewhere in there that's screwing up the max. Uh, it's, it's either a feature or a bug, right? Uh, either it's a good way to know you've made a mistake quickly, or it's the fact that Emacs can't parse what you just did, so how does it know where to put the next parenthesis? Take it whatever way you want, that's what that means. Um, so when you're in a language mode, it'll do a lot of these kind of things. Syntax highlighting, spacing, automatic alignment. You can actually, uh, if you have an entire file that's you know misaligned because so you copy a file from the internet or something, right? None of the tabs are in the right place. So you have something that's all screwed up like this, right? You can actually select the whole thing. So I'm going to do a control space like we did before. I'm going to start going up to select everything. And with it all selected, if I just hit tab, it's going to respace everything to where it thinks it should be based upon the current language mode. So I could have gone through every line and hit tab and it would have fixed each line individually, or I can highlight an entire section, hit tab, and it should fix everything in the section. Does it not work for you? Or? Um, well, it, it changed my indentations to two spaces. Okay, so the, two, the default must be two spaces or something. I, I can show you how to change that. Um, 
Okay. It may depend, it depends upon a number of things, but it's easy to change. Point being, if you want to reformat an entire document or some subset of the document, select where you want to reformat, hit tab, and you'll notice it says indenting region, done, and now everything should be indented in the appropriate manner. I screwed up again because I forgot. This one's still wrong, right? But now it's fixed. All right. So questions on C mode? I mean, this would be similar to any other language mode. It's got to pick mode by default by the file extension. If you're using the standard file extensions, .py, .html, .xml, so on and so forth, it should get you into a mode that's pretty standard. I mean, for instance, if I do Control X, Control F, then I do a hello.py. Well, except I can't spell hello, but the point's the same. Um, I should now be working in, I mean, this is a Python script, right? So uh, it should now start following standard Python rules. <coughs> right, I can go on and go through, and it'll start doing Python y kind of things for me. And it'll start highlighting Python keywords, so on and so forth. Uh, it knows a ridiculous number of languages. Uh, it has modes for languages that you didn't even know exist. And actually, most of the languages have modes for you probably don't know exist. Um, so it's pretty versatile. You can actually, Emacs is super customizable. You can actually write a file that tells it how to interpret a language. So if you go and create your own language and you want Emacs syntax highlighting for it, it's not that hard to add. Um, we're not going to do any of that kind of stuff tonight. That's well into advanced Emacs territory. Uh, but try to open something in Emacs. There's a good chance it has a special mode for it. Some of you may be LaTeX users. It definitely has a LaTeX mode. Uh, if anyone uses it, I'm not going to open my go find the LaTeX file right now. But it, it has modes for everything you could really imagine. Um, and then within each mode, you can customize the subsets. Like I could change these colors. I could change the default tabbing, all that kind of stuff. Questions? Okay. 